Hello everyone, Solo Guy here, and this is the start of another after action report. Solo style, of course, hence the phrase Solo Guy, right? Anyways, um, I wanted to give Battle Group a try. Take a break from Flames of War, and I managed to get a copy of Battle Group Kursk. So this has this is the first printing. It has the rules as well as the Curse campaign on there. And I already did a review on that, so you can check that out on the other video. But what I was interested in, what I wanted to do, was show the scenario that I'm going to recreate today. As we focus on Clash of reconnaissance yep clash of reconnaissance so that's what it is okay and the story it's an introductory scenario and essentially you have russian and german you have a platoon of infantry a little bit of support uh you have a tank on each side you have reconnaissance on each side um, I altered the battle, orders of battle, just a little bit because I didn't quite have everything. Uh, but with that, let me show you what the forces are going to be like. Okay, so this is the reconnaissance elements for the Germans. And for the sake of argument, we're going to say it's the Großdeutschland Division. Okay, so we have our platoon command here this is the first squad second squad third squad now it's not arranged quite the same way as it is in battle group where you've got two or three guys on, on the LMG team and then every and then five guys you know uh, for the rest of the squad so it's like four and four on each of the stands I am using my flames of war stands for this and I'll show you guys how I'll keep track of the markers shortly we have one recon element here. That would be our armored car. We have a 50 millimeter uh, AT gun, and we have a truck and a Panzer G. Now, you might say, hey, it's got Scherzen. You're right, it does. It's the H. I don't have any Gs, but this will do in a pinch, and you get the main idea. Now, what will I use for a German objective? Well, hey. Why not? Because I have it. Yes, this is the El Alamein objective I had when version 4 first dropped and I first viewed it. Okay, let's take a look at the other side. Okay, now we're looking at the other side. So, what unit is this? Ah, uh, we'll call it an independent guards reconnaissance unit if we want. I, I, I don't know. Remember, this scenario is hypothetical, but it doesn't matter. It's taking place during the time of Korsk, and I'm going to call this one On the Road on the road to Oboyan. So let's look at this here. We have our Russian platoon commander here. This is our scout sniper. We have a truck towing a 45 millimeter AT gun. We have a T-34-76 M-43 tank. We have a BA-64 armored car. It is machine gun armed. I don't have any BA-10s, but the BA-64s were in fact there at that time. I have one 82 millimeter mortar team. I have one anti-tank rifle team. And then I have got three squads here, eight guys with the light machine guns. Okay. And with that, I'm gonna show you Oh, I'm going to keep track of the counters and all the stuff that's going to be going on. Oh, oh, hey, I forgot. We're going to use this one here for the Russian objective marker. And then I got to show you the other stuff. So how am I going to do this with all the markers and the things done for battleground? Well, for one thing, the way I'm going to keep track of ca casualties, I'm going to use these pin markers from bolt action. So I can put them behind the stand and indicate how many casualties they've taken. 
So that's going to make it easy. Pin markers. Flames of War, baby. That works. Now, what about things like Ambush and Move and Fire? Bolt Action Order Dice. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now, what in the world am I going to do for Reserve Move and things like that? Um, I do have colored, different colored beads that I could use with that, but this is going to take care of a lot of things uh, there. Now, I also want to show you guys the thing about placing the objective markers because I had to have a limit. I had to, there was limits put on where I could put them. So I had to measure that out. 10 inches from the table edge and if you notice if you notice here ladies and gentlemen if you notice that uh, I've got these bright orange boundary markers yeah I got those and it worked out really well you can check out the review uh, on that as well so I'm going to set up and then we're going to get things started Okay, so we have set up our objectives. The Russians have set up their objectives here at the intersection of the road. Germans have set up their objective near the house, not the house itself. The Germans deployed their armored car, their only recon unit out there, their only scout unit. The Russians have set up their BA-64 behind this group of trees here so it can see out a little bit of cover a little bit of obscurity and we have our sniper group so we're got ready to get going okay solo guy here this is going on my very first run with battle group an introductory scenario a clash of reconnaissance um, I altered the forces a little bit, as you can tell earlier in the previous video segment. But uh, because the Germans were outscouted, and that meant that the Russians had two scouts compared to the Germans one, well, the Germans had to go and pick up something from their battle rating. So this goes against their battle rating. Okay. And then the next question comes down to is, who is going to go first? The Russians get a plus one because, well, okay, this is not even a contest for crying out loud. Not a chance in the world. Nope. Oh, okay, I guess the Russians are going to be going first. What will they do? Okay. Um, like I said, the video is going to come in different portions as I am going through the rulebook. Uh, and I am doing it by myself. So if I do make mistakes, please forgive me. Or hey, let me know in the comments below. The Russians won. So now the two units over there, uh, they get their choices as to what they want to do. Uh, they get two, they can do two actions. It can be a combination of they could shoot and shoot. They could maneuver, meaning move and shoot, shoot, then maneuver, or stay there and be in ambush mode, which allows them to respond during a German turn if they want. Um, so yeah, there's a number of, there's other options, but right now those are the basics for what we have. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this ambush marker here. I'm going to put this ambush for the sniper. Even though I know the Germans aren't going to bring anything out, then, uh, I am going to move the Russian armored car and I'm going to do a duh, move, move. And I'm going to bring the Russian armor car to here. So he's behind the tree. He's got a little bit of cover. Okay. He is within five inches of the objective. And that's going to force the Germans to take another battle rating uh, pick. Okay. 
and that would be instant, and that would be basically it for the Russian part of turn one. Okay, so what I did for the Russian armored car, I had him do the double move from here over to here, so he's kind of cowering behind the trees a little bit. Now he did a double run. He's within the five inches of the objective marker, so the Germans had to go pick another one. And okay, this is what they have. It's a little bit of a challenge to for the Russian player not to know what's been going on. But uh, those are the risks doing the uh, solo thing. It's called Grow Up. Okay. And you just got to play each side to its best advantage possible. Because remember, this is meant to be fun. This is meant to be doing something different. You got to enjoy this. Otherwise, what's the point uh, doing this? Okay. So the Russian part of the turn one is over. Now we're going to look at the Germans. And they can't roll for reinforcements. That will be the next turn. The Germans have a couple of options here, and again, they can do, they could move and fire, they could fire and fire, fire and move. At this point, though, they really don't have anybody in the line of sight uh, here, um, so I'm going to go with, for the Germans to go move over to here. Move over to this side that they could get to see the uh, BA-64 and start shooting at it. And maybe we will get lucky. Who knows? No guts, no glory. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move the armored car over to here. And then we have to... So I've moved... Okay, so I did an advance, but I'm also going to shoot. Uh, I have the choices of targets. I could go for the sniper. I could go for the armored car. Um, arguably, it is an open-topped vehicle, so maybe I could get it to pin down, which means it would be ineffective against doing anything. That's the good news. Um, I could try to aim uh, that would be a little harder because I moved, the armored car moved, okay? I could also fire HE rounds there and I could just pin those guys down. So those are the, that's, this is kind of different from Flames of War uh, because there you can choose what kind of firing and the mechanisms are a little bit different uh, for that. So I will get back to you. Okay, so looking at the German turn one, the lower half of turn one, uh, the last time we left off, we had this armored car, PS222, move backwards, and then they were going to do some suppressive fire or area fire on the sniper scout team. So. Thanks to this handy chart, it does make things a little bit easier. And I'm going to do area fire instead. Okay, so I've got the maximum range here. It is a light auto cannon, 20 millimeter, 50 inches. Okay, however, I mean, it's got an ROF of six, but it's area fire. I only roll one die. I did get that cleared up. So then it's just a question of, I roll a C under the suppressing fire table. And with that um, HE from a very light gun, okay, it's infantry, I get a five plus on there. So five, five or a six, and I literally have suppressed those guys. So let's see, here's the question. Do I? No, no, I do not. So yeah, that's the end of the exciting turn there. So thus ends turn one. Okay, so we are now at the end of the Russian portion of turn two. So what's happening? Russian reinforcements are now coming in. Uh, that's rolled for by a D6. 
So I brought in the anti-tank rifle team. I brought in one squad with the DPMG. So I look at those as one squad, although I think this is really two units. I'm assuming the MG team is a separate unit from the uh, regular rifle squad. And I had my towed 45 millimeter AT gun come in and they hustled and they deployed. So now the AT gun has got something to see down the roadway. The BA-64 armored car scooched over to this woods here, did a double move on that and is still just within the five inches of the objective. So it's still there. Meanwhile, the Sniper Scout team has decided to stay in ambush. So, this is a different feel from Flames of War, I have to say. Uh, because now you have to, because you're thinking, you are thinking carefully, but it's like, now you don't have multiple AT guns in a unit, or you don't get your entire platoon on the table at one time. So, let's see what the Germans are going to be doing. Okay, well, the Germans rolled for how many units they get to bring on? They rolled a six. Oof, so, this brings in one unit, the, eight, the 50 mil AT gun with the tow truck, that's one unit. Two units with the platoon HQ. Three, four, five, six. That would be the LMG team with the rifle, but I'm going to try to move those guys as one piece. So now it's a question of what are they going to be doing this turn? How many orders do they get? So we're going to roll to see how many orders that they get. Two plus the officer, that gives three orders. Oh, oh, oh. Painful. Painful, but at least these guys are a bit of ways, um, and they are, there is obstruction, but I got to get those guys hustling. All right, let's see what happens in this experiment. All right, we're at the end of German turn two. Uh, the Germans rolled and they ended up getting one, two, three, four, five, six units out onto the game. I'm, I'm treating the LMG sections as separate units. So, for the Germans, and they rolled the command dice, it was two plus one, so I could only get three. So these guys are here at the edge of the table, the platoon command, and one rifle squad, one grenadier squad with the LMG. So I double moved these guys here, take cover behind the embankment, with the idea of maybe observing the snipers, but that might be a bit of a risky thing. Uh, armored car didn't do anything. The truck moved up, hopped over the rail, and dismounted the AT gun, uh, maybe to get a shot at uh, at the BA-64 over here, or it might be the gun battle between uh, the 45 and them. That's hard to say. However, now that the Germans are officially within five inches, well they were in five inches of this objective in turn one, undisputed control. So at this point, ladies and gentlemen, I drew from the bag of fate, if you will, and lo and behold, Okay, third time I have drawn in my entire short career of playing battle group, I got an air attack. Okay. So I'm going to set it down on the table, but we got to see if an air attack will actually materialize. Here we go. I have to roll a d6. I need a 5 or a 6, and it will actually materialize the following turn. We're 
going to have an air attack on the next turn for the Germans. And thus, ladies and gentlemen, ends turn two. Okay, so here we are at the end of Russian turn three. Armored car decided to go for ambush. The sniper decided to go for ambush. The ATR team is now just behind this building. They hustled. Oh, the Russians rolled a six plus one for orders. So that was not a problem. They did get more reinforcements on there. Uh, basically a couple of infantry platoons and that was it. So we've got um, our other platoon moved up here at a run and a run and a run. So on a run on the bolt action orders dice represents that they move twice. The ambush represents that they gave up their turn for an opportunity to take pot shots at the Germans during the Germans turn at any time. And this AT gun, um, well, they did observe this AT gun here. They did, you have to roll to observe. They did, they fired, they missed. But you, every time you want to take the aimed fire, you have to. Because every time you want to do an aim fire, you have to roll to see if you observe. And that represents the chaos and confusion. So they observed once. They failed to hit. They tried to observe again. They failed. Now, these guys are going to be easier to spot for the AT gun on the German's turn because these guys fired. And that makes it just a little bit easier. Now, I still have an airstrike to deal with. So, more on that later as we move on to German turn three. End of German turn three. I made a mistake. That aircraft was drawn, the air attack was drawn by the Russians because the Germans secured their victory uh, objective. They have secured their objective here so the Russians get the air attack, and it should have been executed last turn, but I'm going to execute it in the next turn. Well, for the Germans, their last reinforcements came. That was this platoon here. The Germans rolled a three for the number of orders, plus one for the officer. They gave four orders. So I had this platoon, this uh, squad move up but they didn't have enough movement to cross over the rail embankment. The platoon HQ went ran up to this rail embankment and they just didn't have enough to cross over. They just crossed over, sorry. Uh, these guys were deployed here. They moved up, taking cover behind. And the AT gun here fired on the Russian gun over there. They did succeed in observing and they succeeded and they just missed. And then they rolled again to observe, and they missed. They just didn't observe. So that was wasted for them. However, the BA-64 in the trees noticed these guys here. They sprayed twice. They sprayed some light machine gun fire as area fire here with the purpose of pinning them. And they hit... Not the first time they tried. They hit the second time they tried. Uh, but these guys are behind that railroad embankment. That's a cover save of four plus, And these guys rolled a five. And that was pretty much it. Uh, those ambush boys over there didn't do anything. Uh, save the uh, thing for another time. Okay, because remember, you'd say, but wait, that's an ambush opportunity. Why don't you use it? Here's the thing. With this game, if you fire, it now becomes easier to spot you. So I'd rather have the enemy doubt that these guys are there than they fire and remove all doubt, so to speak. Okay, so we are now moving on to Russian turn four. And this is where armored reinforcements can come in because we do get a tank uh, to come in with it. And now it starts to become critical as far as your order dice that you need to roll. Okay, stay tuned, battle group fans. All right, so we're here at Russian turn three. The aircraft, the air attack is definitely Russian. I rolled, I got PE2. Dive bombers, they are armed with the bombs. 
and I rolled and it's eight inches off. So it's eight inches off the thing in a random direction. But wow, what do I have for a random direction? Yes, yes, some of you might recognize this. This is for my Warhammer 40K days. Oh my gosh, this thing is over 20 years ago. Okay, this is a random scatter dice. And if I do roll, if I in fact do roll the hit, then I will have to re-roll it, obviously. No, re-roll. Ooh, it's eight inches. Oh, nuts. Well, eight inches down. And... Oh, my word. That puts it right here. Oh, well, well, well. Wow. Wow. That's bad. That's really, really bad because that's where it ended up. So, wow. It looks like this is going to get hit. Uh, oops. All right. I had to show where the air attack was coming in. Okay, we're at the end of Russian turn four. You saw the previous uh, video. I am not doing this all in one sitting. I do it in bits and pieces at a time. That's why you're seeing, it's one of the reasons why you're seeing the videos the way they are. Uh, that Russian plane dropped the eggs right here. That originally it was here. It deviated and I needed to add an extra D6 to the deviation. I rolled a six and two ones. So it ended up here, bombs go boom. Most of this platoon, out of eight guys, there are only three left, but they survived their morale, and they survived not being pinned. So this is where I'm using my bolt action marker to indicate how many casualties this particular squad uh, took. However, the platoon commander, not that good. Um, they end up having a grand, what, they took four casualties. There's only two guys left of this squad here, um, of the platoon command squad, and thus the senior officer. Um, they did get hard cover because they were behind the, the rail embankment because the bomb blast was here. They survived the morale check, but they got pinned. So they're kind of stuck, and there's not much left of them to do. Uh, these guys did get pin results, but they got pins, but they survived those. Um, now, to pull back a little bit further here, let's pull back a little bit further and show you what has been happening here. The Russian turns, the Russians have been busy doing other things like... Hey, what do you know? The T-34 came up, did the double move right to here. Okay. I ordered the ATR team into this house. They took a shot at the German AT gun. They hit, but it didn't do anything. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I had the infantry moving up. I had the platoon commander moving up. These guys, I didn't have them do anything. Uh, the BA-64 fired on this platoon, area fire or suppressive fire, and succeeded in suppressing these guys. Oh, when the Germans uh, picked a battle counter because of being attacked by having an air attack, this is what they got. Ouch. Ouch. So the Germans right now are up at eight. The Russians, nada, nothing. Nothing has happened to them. The Germans are not having the luck. They're not getting the command uh, roles that they really, really need to. And right now they're gonna have to burn another battle marker if they wanna bring this and this back online. However, they do get their Mark IV on the next turn. And that may very well help things out. 
the duel between the two anti-tank guns across the way there, uh, they're having a hard time hitting each other, and they're just not doing anything about it. So, think of the truck might want to leave, accept the better part of valor, and run for it, because that is considered a separate unit at this point. So, giving it the order to get out would be good, and leave the AT gun crew to its own thing. All right, this is Solo Guy at the end of Russian turn four. So, here we are at the end of Axis turn four, German turn four, take your pick. So, uh, the Germans have been taking some hits, and now they're starting to give some of that back. Uh, German Mark IV crossed over the railway embankment and just ran his way through. The armored car fired on the Russian sniper team and pinned them down. Can you imagine that? Um, the anti-tank gun fired at the Russian anti-tank gun over here, pinned them on the first try. Uh, the second try, they tried to aim for the BA-64. They failed. Uh, they failed to hit. Meanwhile, these guys proceeded to fire here into this building because there is a Russian... ATR group in there. Now there's two guys really on the stand, not three. This is from the Flames of War, but uh, they took a casualty. So now there's only one guy left. He did pass his morale test. So, wow, what are the Russians going to do next? Well, again, you'll just have to stay tuned and find out as... You're walking with me through this uh, solo adventure with a new system. All right, I'll be back. Okay, here we are at the end of Russian turn five. The Russians didn't have a lot of orders. They only had four orders and way too many units to mess around with. So that had to be used sparingly. So the ATR team tried to take shots at the German armored car over there. This one, uh, they couldn't even observe, so that ended the turn. Uh, the T-34 here decided to open fire uh, with machine guns on there, and they failed on that. Uh, the third order I had was here on the armored car, they turned their machine guns onto there. They managed to inflict a casualty on there, but not pin them. The last order was given to this squad here, moved up, ended up spotting them, firing on them with aimed fire, causing two more casualties on this squad, and on top of that, pinned them down. So, wow, what... What a turn that has been. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, both sides have been, have been, they've been messed up in their own way, but the Germans have been taking many more casualties, primarily because of the bombing raid. That did wonders. But we'll see what happens in the next turn. One of the things I noticed for shooting, one way to indicate if a unit has shot, I think I would put cotton balls in front to indicate that they have been shot. All right, that's the end of Russian turn five. Let's see what the Germans can do. Okay, the end of German turn five. On the one hand, the Germans rolled enough that they could have their guys do pretty much anything. Too bad they didn't take advantage of it. The AT gun decided to fire onto here, aimed fire, and they spotted, they failed to hit, they tried to spot again, observe, failed. That's so much for that one. Uh, whatever was left of this squad, they hopped over and hustled it over just to about the doorway there. Is there a doorway there? Nope, they're going to have to crawl through a window. 
uh, the next turn to get into the house, but there's not many of those guys left. The armored car here decided to fire with machine guns on the ATR team. Too bad they couldn't observe them. They couldn't spot them worth beans. Meanwhile, uh, this Panzer IV decided, eh, I better go on ambush and just see what the Ruskies are going to do the next turn. All the forces are on the table, and again, it's a different feel from Flames. Very different feel. Uh, there is definitely more confusion, and there's definitely more of, you can't do everything you want to do with your brilliant men. Uh, that, I have to say, that makes it, on the one hand, more frustrating, but on the other hand, this is what happened on the real battlefield. So I do appreciate that. What I would do, though, uh, instead of leaving the order dice indicating that they fired, I would just put a, uh, a white cotton in front of the units to indicate that they have fired. Um, for units that have moved, I would still keep those order, uh, I would still keep the order markers there for that because the bolt action dice are absolutely perfect uh, for that. Okay, so we're now on to Russian turn six. End of Russian turn six. Uh, I have to say, the uh, command dice, the command dice thing, wow, what can I say? The Russians got to roll a whopping two commands. That's it. That's all they got. So the platoon commander moved into the building here, and the ATR guy aimed here, shot twice, hit once, no effect. That's it for the Russian turn six. Okay. Okay. Russian, I mean German, turn six. Uh, the Germans got to roll for four commands. So we had one, the remnants of this squad go into here. This uh, armored car fired onto the uh, ATR team, trying to pin, failed. Tank tried to do the same thing with machine gun fire, failed. Um, the AT gun tried to fire at the BA-64 and missed in their shooting. That's it. We are now on to Russian turn seven. Okay, bottom of Russian turn seven. The ATR decided to shoot again at the armored car. They missed and they didn't observe. The armored car here decided to area fire on the AT gun. They missed. The T-34 moved a little bit back here so it doesn't get shot at by this guy and tried to spot this guy and failed to observe him for an aimed shot. So that is the excitement for Russian turn seven. Okay, we are at the very bottom of German turn six. Um, the armored car got the brilliant idea of backing out to here to get out of the way of that T-34. Mark IV fired off into that infantry squad. They spotted, failed a hit, fired on there, and they hit, they rolled a cover save, no effect. The anti-tank gun spotted, fired, hit this, no effect, fired, oh, missed, then spotted, fired, hit, pinned them down. So at this point, the Russian, the Germans, that was the end of their turn. Um, the thing comes down to is they, in order to bring those pinned units back online, they had to go and pull this and they were able to roll high enough to get these guys here, these three units, 
unpinned and they're ready to go for the next turn. All right, what will the Russians do next? Okay, here we are at the end of Russian turn eight. Lot of things, the Russians have been doing a little bit of shifting around. So let us get to it. You may notice that you had a couple of squads here. I've got one out here. They booked it for the field. This squad moved up. They are taking cover inside these woods here. Okay, next to the pinned armored car, the ATR tried to line up a shot on the German armored car. No effect. These guys are swinging around. They're booking it. They're swinging around to come here, uh, ultimately to support the T-34. The T-34 has moved here to take angle a shot at there. So the Russians have not decided to take a uh, battle counter yet to rally the troops. Um, that is debatable whether they're going to do that because there's still plenty of units out there on the field. It's not that critical yet, unlike the Germans in the last turn. So we are now going to be in German turn eight. Let's see what happens. All right, so we're at the end of German turn eight. Uh, good thing for the Germans to rally, uh, take that uh, battle marker, that battle rating marker, get these guys back online. Uh, these guys here tried to spot, they tried to fire, nothing was working for them, absolutely nothing. Uh, these guys here ran into this building, uh, again, they fired nothing, or I should say they tried to observe and they kept failing on observing on the aimed fire. These guys here aimed at the Russian squad over there, spotted them, fired uh, the first time missed, second time they hit, and they scored a Russian casualty, and they took a morale check. So that squad and the armored car over there are now pinned down. So that's it. Let's see what happens on the next Russian turn. Okay, here we are at the end of Russian turn nine. Can you believe it's gotten this far? Now, uh, at this point, these guys moved up, double-timed it to behind the woods there. Uh, this T-34 fired on this squad, missed the first time, hit the second time, inflicted two casualties, and they got the Merry Christmas, you're pinned again, marker. The ATR shot, missed, kept shooting at the armored car, I'm amazed it's able to do that. This squad over here on this end moved up, fired on here. And one of the things is with the rules of ones and sixes, I got to roll seven dice because I was able to observe them. And I still got a couple of hits. I got a hit because a six will always hit. A one will always fail. So that's cool. That means there's still a one chance in six. Uh, but it still resulted in no extra casualties here. The Russians decided to rally troops. They had to draw from the bag, okay, of chits, and they got a mine strike, which would have been great if any German vehicles were moving this last turn and there wasn't any. So that I treated as a battle rate of zero uh, for all intents and purposes on that. And that's it. Let's see what the Germans do for turn nine. Okay, bottom half of German turn nine. Honestly, truly, a whole lot of nothing. Either these guys couldn't observe anything, or they observed, they fired, and they couldn't hit the broad side of a barn on the inside if they had a targeting reticle to help them out. Disappointing for the Germans. On for the Russians for turn 10. Wow. Russian turn 9. Russian turn 9. 
Well, the Russians rolled a five on the command dice, so they got six. And the mortars over there zeroed in on this AT gun from about almost 50 inches away and destroyed the AT gun. Wow, that was it for these guys. Then, then the ATR tried to fire defiantly, couldn't do anything. That's okay because the T-34, then this squad moved forward into the woods to try to spot these guys here in the building and give them a steady stream of lead. They couldn't do that. But the hero of the hour, yeah. Yeah, it's time to zero in on the hero. The hero of the Soviet Union. Yes, sir, Bob. The lowly T-34. Well, not so lowly. Not if you're going there and asking this Mark for his feelings. Because he advanced, spotted, which was automatic, fired, penetrated, and whack. So what happened was that the last two chits that the Germans drew... Okay, I gotta find where they... This is it. The last two chits that the Germans drew were fours. Ow. And that's it, folks. The Germans, they broke. The game is over. And it was looking bad for the Germans anyways on this. And yes, I tried to be fair on both sides. This is my first experience on this. Um, wow. There's a lot to say about this game system. There really is. Many, many positive things uh, to say. So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to stop here. And I got to put this together and get this up on YouTube. It was an introductory scenario, Clash of Reconnaissance. I had a blast with it. And I was trying to learn the rules. And if I fumbled, if I made mistakes, Please let me know in the comments if you survived the uh, story for this long, okay? But uh, quite a wild tale of dive bombers nearly taking out the platoon commander, of AT guns having duels, of ATRs trying to hit armored cars, pinned infantry just refusing to unpin. It's just been a brutal fight. But that last moment, the T-34. Hey, I hope this benefited you guy. guys. You take care. God bless you. Solo guy out. I will be back.